Welcome to your cathedral. I'm Father Greg Sackowitz. Mustered out with a joke. Four brothers left home for college and they became very successful doctors and lawyers. One evening they chatted after having dinner together. They discussed their mother's 95th birthday and what they'd gotten mom for her 95th birthday. She was now living in Florida. The first son said, you know, I had a big house built for mama. The second son said, I had a large Dolby theater built with inside that house. The third son said, I had my Mercedes dealer deliver an XL600 to mom's driveway for her birthday. The fourth son said, you know how mom so loved reading the Bible. And you know that she can't read anymore because she can't see too well. I met this preacher who told me about a parrot who could recite the entire Bible verse by verse. It took 10 preachers, eight years to teach his parrot the Bible, beginning to end, verse by verse. I had a pledge to contribute $50,000 a year for five years to the church. It was worth it. All mama has to do is name the chapter and verse and the parrot will recite it. The other brothers were really impressed by this. After celebration, mom sent her following thank you notes to her four sons. Milton, the house you built is so huge. I only live in one room, but I have to clean the whole house anyway, so thanks a lot. Marvin, I'm way too old to travel. I stay home. I have my groceries delivered, so I never use the Mercedes. The thought was nice, thanks anyway. Michael, you gave me an expensive theater with Dolby Sound. It can hold 50 people, but all my friends are dead. I've lost my hearing, I'm nearly blind. I'll never use it. Thank you for the gesture anyway. My dearest, dearest, dearest Melvin, you are the only son to have the good sense to give a little thought to your gift. The chicken was delicious. <laughs> Thank you very much. Love, Mama. Speaking of thank yous, Father Mark is kind of shaking his head. Thank you to, again, Mark Teresi. Week in, week out, his gorgeous, terrific singing voice Mark, you're getting better every week in your the golden voice. Special thank you to David Jonas, our director of music here at Holy Name Cathedral. David, you play so beautifully, so thank you to David and to Mark. Special thanks again to Father Mark, producer Smolka. Week in and week out, does a great job, takes the entire package, puts it together. This is like our 18th and 19th, or 18th and 19th week in a row. We plan to continue, and thanks to all of you for uh, listening and viewing each week. At a nursing home, a group of seniors were sitting around 
talking about their ailments, their aches and pains. The first senior said, my arms have gotten so weak, I can hardly lift my cup of coffee. Yeah, I know, said another, my cataracts are so bad, I can't even see my coffee. The third one said, my hands are so bad, I can't even open up, open up my jar of Metamucil. The fourth said, I can't turn my head because of the arthritis in my neck, to which several others nodded very weakly in agreement. And one more said, my blood pressure pills make me so dizzy half the time. I guess that's the price we pay for getting old, winced an old man who calmly just shook his head. The others nodded in agreement. Well, count your blessings, said one elderly woman cheerfully. Thank God we can all still drive. <laughs> I'm in a humorous mood today. Today's gospel this weekend, as we continue ordinary time, is really about blessings and sharing. I'd like to offer an interpretation of today's gospel that might be a bit different. Many people who sought Jesus in today's gospel were searching for life's meaning and purpose, seeking to be nourished, wanting life to connect. Others were coming that day out of curiosity, who is this Jesus? In many ways, the crowd of people in today's gospel are really all of us. The vast throng seeking Jesus probably didn't hike to see him up the mountain without bringing their own food. But the people's intention was to keep the food for themselves. In John's Gospel, he says the five loaves and two fish belong to a little boy. That little boy and Jesus instigated a miracle. What Jesus did by example was to take food and share with those around him. The people in turn are freed and follow the Lord's example and share their food with those around them. At the end, fragments were gathered, all gathered up, filling 12 baskets. Did Jesus perform a miracle? Absolutely yes. Jesus is the greatest miracle because of love. Jesus fills our hunger, which in turn allows us and frees us to reach out to others in need. Maybe two key lessons for all of us as we listen and ponder the scriptures from this weekend. The importance of being Jesus Christ to each other. The importance of being Eucharist to each other. The word Eucharist means to give thanks. We truly, despite COVID-19, have so much to be thankful for. However, sometimes, many of us, I think, we become our own worst enemy. We blame others, we feel sorry for ourselves. Expectations of what I want are not met. We expect this or that from life. Many times we procrastinate. Listen to the story. The young salesman approached the farmer, began to talk very excitedly about the book he was carrying. This book, he told the farmer, will tell you everything you need to know about farming. The young man said very enthusiastically, it tells you when to sow and when to reap. It tells you about the weather, what to expect and when. This book will tell you everything you need to know about farming and everything else beside it. Young man, said the elderly farmer, that's not the problem. I know everything there is in that book you want to sell me. My problem is doing it. My problem is doing it. You know, what three words would I like written or would you like to have written about yourself on your tombstone, on my tombstone? But even a harder question, if I were to die tomorrow or any of us died this month, what three words in reality about us would be written? If I were to say I want to be loving, in reality, am I loving? I remember being compassionate, but have I been compassionate? There's always a time to change to grow, to start over, to become more like Jesus, a giver, 
one who lives for others, start today, despite COVID-19. And I've said this before, no matter how many steps we take away from God, it only takes one step to get back to God. Powerful story. A dad asked his seven-year-old son, who was coming to his seventh birthday two weeks later, now son, what would you like for your birthday this year? And the son thought about it and said, you know, Dad, my birthday coming up, turning seven in two weeks, I would like a ball for my birthday. Great, said Dad, what type of ball? Well, the son said, either I guess a football or a soccer ball. Well, which one do you want more? The boy thought about it and said for a second, well, Dad, if you would have some time to play ball with me this year, I would really like a football so we could throw it back and forth. But if you're going to be very busy again this year, maybe just get me a soccer ball because I can play soccer with all the kids in the neighborhood. And Dad said, tell you what, let me surprise you. How does that sound? The little boy said, that would be great, Dad. Daddy, I love you so much. But it was Dad who was surprised, surprised and touched that his young son was not so much interested in the gift as in the giver. Let me show that again. The dad was caught by surprise, and the surprise was that his son was not so much interested in the gift, but rather the giver, his father. We too can be givers and perform wonders in our own time and place by imitating those four divisive and decide, no, take it back, four decisive Eucharistic verbs found in the Eucharistic prayer. To take, bless, break, and give. Four decisive words, Eucharistic verbs. To take, bless, break, and give. Taking from what we have, number one. Number two, blessing it by offering it to others in God's spirit of love. Three, breaking it from our own needs and interests for the sake of others. And finally, and giving it with joy-filled gratitude to others. Christ calls all of us to be a Eucharistic people, to become the Eucharist we have received for others in our generosity, compassion, mercy, and work for reconciliation and justice. St. Augustine once said, Eucharist, by receiving Eucharist, we are called and challenged to become what we have received. Think about that. By receiving the Eucharist, we are challenged to become what we have received. Lord, what do you ask of me this day? And give me the courage to do it. May we always be sharers, givers, and forgivers. A little commercial. We are now live stream at Holy Name Cathedral. Praise God, Alleluia. So go to our Holy Name Cathedral Facebook or YouTube. Also look for us at the Holy Name Cathedral website. We are live stream Sunday, 10 a.m., weekdays, Monday through Friday, 9.30 a.m. So again, we are now live stream Sundays, 10 a.m., and weekdays, Monday through Friday, 9.30 a.m., by going to our Holy Name Cathedral Facebook and YouTube. Also get a link from our Holy Name Cathedral website. May God bless all of you today, every day, and stay healthy.